What is up, you guys? Welcome to another edition of Controversial Thoughts. I thought that for this week, I would address this question, which I think is an interesting one for me at this point, which is, am I an omnivore? Is carnivore MD an omnivore? So let's dig into this. I want to start this with a little bit about my story, and then I want to tell you the story of two different hominid precursors, Paranthropus and Homo habilis or Homo erectus. But first, my story. So you guys may know this if you follow me for a while, but I grew up in a medical family. My dad was a physician. My mom was a nurse. I've always been fascinated by food and interactions between food and chronic illness. I had my own chronic illness, specifically eczema and asthma, conditions of atopy, which really hampered my ability to do the things I liked throughout my life whether it was jujitsu in medical school or surfing in residency, I had severe, severe eczema at times based on uh, what I believe were different foods that I was eating. So that was the genesis of my interest and the genesis of my carnivore diet experiment uh, over three years ago now. I cut out all the plants from my diet and I ate only meat and organs and fat and salt and water for about a year and a half. And this was great. It really improved my eczema. It went away completely. I never had any recurrence of eczema unless I tried to introduce certain plant foods. For me specifically, it was squash that seemed to trigger my eczema when I reintroduced it. And things were great, except that long-term ketosis didn't work well for me. I've done previous videos about why I'm not a fan of long-term ketosis. And in short, it was that for me, it caused really severe electrolyte deficiencies, which manifested as heart palpitations, muscle cramps, and sleep disturbances. A lot of people get this. We hear emails from you guys and messages from you guys all the time at Heart and Soil, uh, people who are in long-term ketosis doing strict carnivore diets who often have a lot of benefits in the beginning, but then end up running into problems related to electrolyte issues long-term. So for me and for many of you, including some other sources of carbohydrates in your diet has been really helpful. And it's kind of been like the missing link here. We know that animal foods are super nutritious, especially organs, in addition to meat. That's why we do what we do at Heart and Soil. We make the desiccated organ supplements to help you guys get more organs in your diet. And animal foods are clearly the source of most of our nutrition as humans that has made us who we are as humans. I've talked about that before in my book. I'll show you guys a graphic about that in a moment. But is the inclusion of carbohydrates beneficial for humans? In addition to that, I think it is. That's why I sort of transition to this type of a diet for myself. So the answer to the question is yes, I'm an omnivore. And I think a lot of people see that and they're like, ha ha, I got you. Carnivore MD isn't even a carnivore, but <laughs> it's nuanced, right? I don't like to fall into these dogmatic perspectives and my carnivore MD handle isn't going away anytime soon. So let's, ex let's explore a little bit what the term omnivore actually means. I think when many people think of the term omnivore, they think of Michael Pollan writing the book, The Omnivore's Dilemma. And his slay, saying was, eat, you know, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. I'm gonna go with the opposite saying, which is eat food as much as you want, mostly meat. That's what an animal-based diet is about. And we'll talk about that as well in this video. But I think that the first thing here, and the most important point of this video is to understand that if you look at species on the earth, other than humans, and humans included in this, the term omnivore doesn't mean that a species eats the same amount of a wide variety of foods. An omnivore doesn't necessarily mean that you eat as much plants as you do animal foods and you just eat equal amounts of everything. In general, if you look at these studies, and I'll show you guys a paper in a moment, over 75% of omnivores eat the majority of their foods as either plants or animals, which means that within the animal kingdom, omnivore generalists are more the exception than the rule. Omnivores usually specialize and lean toward either animals or plants. So my assertion, my hypothesis here, and this is where the term animal-based comes from, is that humans are animal-based omnivores. So I wanna show you this paper that I've talked about in the past. This one is from Mickey Bendor, who was on my podcast. And in this paper, The Evolution of the Human Trophic Level During the Pleistocene, he makes this really important point here that 
when you consider this, so analysis of a large N equals 139 data set of mammals trophic levels by Pineda Munoz and Alloy or Alroy in 2014 shows that some 80% of the mammals in the data set are omnivores, but that most of the omnivores, 75%, consume more than 70% of their food from either plants or animals, leaving only 20% of the mammals in the data set to be omnivore generalists. This is really, really important and really interesting. I wanna show you guys the actual paper that he is referring to if you wanna reference this one. This is the actual paper from Pineda Munoz and John Alroy, where they look at the dietary characterization of terrestrial mammals. And so back to the assertion here, back to the hypothesis. Humans are animal-based omnivores. Yes, we are omnivores. We evolved from primates. We know that around four to six million years ago, humans or pre-hominids, specifically Australopithecus, split off from our chimp and bonobo ancestors. We have herbivorous omnivores as our lineage, but something happened and we shifted from being herbivorous omnivores to animal-based omnivores. I would even say carnivorous omnivores who eat the majority of their diet as animals. And that many trace to the origin of our rapidly expanding brain. And we see so many changes in human evolution as we move through Australopithecus to Homo habilis and Homo erectus, specifically shrinking of the small, shrinking of the large intestine, excuse me, growth of the small intestine where more nutrient rich foods like meat are absorbed. The small, the smaller large intestine means we don't need as big large intestine because we're not sitting around 16, 20 hours a day eating plant leaves and fermenting them into short chain fatty acids like apes are, which means we can get a six pack we have a more acute rib angle. We don't have huge protuberant bellies like primates do. So we shifted. Our herbivorous omnivory ancestry shifted into an animal-based omnivorous perspective, which is based mostly on meat and organs, okay? This is what it's all about. And I mentioned this earlier. I wanna show you guys this graphic. This graphic is from my book, The Carnivore Code. It's one of the most important graphics in the book, and it shows the human evolution increase in brain size, okay? What you see here is primate ancestors back millions of years ago, four, six plus million years ago, Australopithecus afarensis, four million years ago, Homo habilis, two million years ago. And this is a parabolic curve. This is an exponential rise in the size of our brain here on the y-axis from 500 cc or less than 500 cc to an apex of 1500 cc modern humans around 1400 cc's. And I placed a few important landmarks on this graph. Homo habilis, 2 million years ago, right at the inflection point. Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, Homo neanderthalensis, around 1 million years ago. Fire sometime in there. But as you can see, human brain sizes was increasing massively even before we have the oldest evidence of fire and right around here, 2 million years ago, the inflection point, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, stone tools and hunting correlate with a sudden and rapid increase in brain size. This has been documented over and over. We see cut marks on bones. We see mass graves of animals. Humans began hunting. Eating meat made us human. Eating meat and organs made us into the humans we are today. This is probably why we shifted from being plant-based omnivores to animal-based omnivores. And now I want to tell you guys the story of Paranthropus bozii. Paranthropus is not on that graphic because Paranthropus is a lineage of hominids that went extinct. So most anthropologists would place Paranthropus and Homo erectus or Homo habilis as two separate lineages, a divergence of the evolution from Homo, excuse me, from Australopithecus. And if you look at this paper, which is quite interesting, we start to see some very fascinating trends emerge. Specifically, that we also confirm that Paranthropus robustus relied more on plant-based foodstuffs than early Homo, that would be Homo habilis, and that a South African scenario is emerging in which broad, the broad ecological niche of Australopithecus became split and was then occupied by Paranthropus and early Homo, that would be Homo habilis, both consuming a lower diversity of foodstuffs than Australopithecus, with Paranthropus going plant-based, 
Australopithecus going, excuse me, Paranthropus going plant-based, early Homo, Homo habilis going animal-based. So this divergence has already happened. This debate has already been done. Paranthropus went extinct. Homo habilis evolved into Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, Homo neanderthalensis and Denisovans. So the plant-based versus animal-based debate was over two million years ago because Paranthropus went extinct. We are not adapted to be plant-based as humans. Eating meat made us human. We are animal-based omnivores. And how do we know this? If you read this study, they do stable isotope analysis, which you can see here, to find the trophic level of early Homo, Homo habilis, Paranthropus robustus, Australopithecus afarensis, and they see that early Homo, more on the carnivorous side, more animal-based, Paranthropus, more plant-based. I'll repeat it again. Paranthropus went extinct. So that is the story of our ancestry. And I'll repeat this again, just for emphasis, so that everybody in the back can hear it. The plant-based versus animal-based debate was over 2 million years ago. Paranthropus went extinct. Homo habilis evolved into Homo erectus. And you are an animal-based omnivore, which means getting the majority of your nutrition from animals is basically what your ancestors have done. This is what we saw with the Hadza when we were there in February in Tanzania. What is your favorite food, you ask them? It's meat. What do you dream about? Meat. What do you, how do you celebrate? We eat meat. What's the best day of your life? When we kill and eat the biggest animal and bring it back to the tribe. And they didn't just eat meat. They always eat the organs. They treasure the organs, which is why I know many of you don't want to eat liver or heart or any of the other things. That's why we do what we do at Heart and Soil. You can check us out at heartandsoil.co. They get desiccated organs. We recently released whole package for guys, which has testicle and blood and liver and her package for females. These are our super exciting new supplements. They're super popular. Her package has ovary, fallopian tubes, and uterus, in addition to kidney and liver. The men's and women's supplements are the new ones we've got, but they're all amazing. And they're all gonna get you unique nutrition that our ancestors have always had. What's your favorite food? Meat, say the Hadza. Meat and organs is what they do. That's what they mean. What's the best day of your life? The day that we kill and eat the biggest animal. Your ancestors were animal-based omnivores. So you better believe that carnivore MD is an omnivore, but I'm not a generalist omnivore. I'm an animal-based omnivore. And I think that's consistent with our evolutionary lineage. I don't think we should get dogmatic and say, you're not carnivore because you eat fruit or you eat honey. I'm eating the majority of my diet as meat and organs and animal fat. I added carbohydrates back, as I told you in my story, because it resulted in massive improvements in my electrolyte balance, my overall health, my uh, body temperature, my sleep, my libido, my muscle maintenance, uh, my testosterone went up. It's having carbohydrates is something that our ancestors have always done too. We're omnivores, but we are animal-based omnivores. So hopefully that helps you guys. Hopefully that helps you understand the story and the lineage. And the next time somebody wants to talk to you about a plant-based diet, ask them if they've heard of Paranthropus robustus, who wasn't so robust, and explain to them how the plant-based versus animal-based debate was over 2 million years ago, and Paranthropus went extinct. Stay radical, guys.